Hey there, this episode is all about playing games, chess, and storytelling, specifically all things inspired by the Queen's Gambit. So here's the deal. When you are having a conversation with someone or you want to start a storytelling moment and you're like, I'm not really sure, or I don't know what to ask, games are usually a pretty safe bet that they're going to have a knee-jerk or a really specific reaction. So generally with board games or card games or just games in general, people either love them or they hate them and they are more than happy to tell you about it. So when you start a conversation around storytelling around games and board games, I would start with what's your favorite, why, who introduced you to it, and why is it important to you now? The reason I'm thinking about all of this is that my teenager recently had a thing happen where she was able to have really a storytelling conversation about chess in a kind of a controlled format. So it was a lively debate in her honors history class. And it was really neat to watch her discover chess in a whole new way. She's known what chess was before, but hadn't really gotten into it. So having the opportunity to have this conversation was epic and it made all the difference. On top of that, that very same weekend, she discovered The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. And she decided to watch it because she had had this storytelling conversation earlier that week about chess and how important it was and how it could help your brain and all these other things. So she binge watches The Queen's Gambit all weekend, which was I was fine with. It was totally fine. And at the end of the weekend, she figures out that she has memorized a few plays. She has some moves down and then just like goes completely off the deep end and learns everything she can about chess. She follows all the greats. She goes and binge watches all these YouTube channels. So if you happen to be watching this and you got a bunch of extra views, it was probably my teenager. And she has figured out how to play chess online. She's using something called Cool Math Games. It's supported by Flash Player, so I'm like not really sure what's going to happen after the end of the year. I'm hoping they'll figure it out, but that is a completely separate video. So back to chess and the Queen's Gambit and storytelling. So she's now really excited about chess and figuring out how it works, and it's completely changed. She's changed her lifestyle because of this experience in order to be able to play more chess. And she's trying to get people to play chess. I'm actually hosting a free community chess night event online virtually so that she has more people to play with. And it's been a really neat experience and a really fun case study to watch. And the case study is that when we have moments of storytelling and then we're able to hear another person's story and then able to have an action item or something they can execute, all around those same themes, it's like a three-pronged, two-pronged thing of finding renewed interest, renewed vigor, and just a renewed, inspired life approach. So something that she wasn't particularly interested before, all of a sudden is now very, very important to her. My point to this story, there is one, I promise, if you're still with me, thank you. The point of the story is that when we take the time to have these storytelling conversations and expose people to things that they loved, things that they fell out of love with but might want to learn again, it gives them an opportunity to examine why they loved it in the first place and how they can fit it into their lives now. Obviously, when people are in care facilities or they're in hospice or something's wrong, it's harder sometimes to do the things they loved. It's harder to do their hobbies. So when we're caring for people and when we're trying to find ways to bring storytelling moments in, to bring hobbies back into someone's life, understanding where they are and what they need is super, super important. It isn't going to work for everyone, and we just have to be able to be okay with that. But you can have those storytelling moments regardless of where someone's at in their life. You can ask them about what their favorite game was. You can find out what their favorite card game was. You can ask if their grandparents taught them any of those games. One of my favorite memories of my grandfather that just passed away was that we played cards at every family event. That is something we did every, every time. (laughs) So I grew up learning to play poker and blackjack and pinochle, and I never quite got 
bridge down. They tried to teach me a bunch of times, but I still haven't gotten it. I'm hopeful that someday when I grow up, I will figure out how to play bridge, but I'm not there yet. Oh, and cribbage. Cribbage is use the other one. Now I'm really on sidetrack. So back to storytelling. <laughs> as I tell you more stories. I'm going to wrap this video up, but I hope this has helped you think about a way you can frame a conversation around a game, your favorite game, their favorite game, and find out more about a person you are caring for. Don't forget to share your story in the course of all of this. It helps build rapport and it helps let the other person know that you care and value them as a human. I hope that you have an incredibly wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the button, whatever you do, wherever you are. And if you want more details, check out the description below. As always, happy writing.